This is a presentation based on Dr. Courtright's lecture on mitochondrial compartments, written and edited by Nicholas Verhoeven. To begin, we must familiarize ourselves with the mitochondrion, an organelle most famously known for its impact in providing cells with energy, in a basic biology course, the powerhouse of the cell. However, for this overall idea to hold true, there are several details one must consider when learning about the mitochondria. This presentation will attempt to explain those details. The mitochondria is structured with an outer membrane and an inner membrane, with a crucial intermembrane space located between both. The matrix of the mitochondria is located in the inner membrane. The outer membrane is comprised of 50% protein and 50% lipid, similar to the endoplasmic reticulum with its major protein, porin, allowing molecules less than 10 kilodaltons to pass freely from the cytosol to the mitochondrial space. The inner membrane, however, is largely protein, with only 20% being lipid. This inner membrane is more complicated and is folded into a series of cristae to create more surface area within the organelle, thereby increasing the functional capacity. The inner membrane is also more tightly regulated, as it requires proteins to traffic molecules in and out of the membrane, making it far less permeable than the outer membrane. Mitochondria import most of their proteins based on nuclear DNA that adds structure and reason to the organelle, but also consists of mitochondrial DNA, which make up an estimated 1% of DNA. On the outer membrane, about 100 proteins are used for mitofusion capabilities, calcium uniporters, kinases, and anti-apoptotic proteins among others. In the inner membrane, 300 proteins are used for largely the electron transport chain, as well as the ANT and the phosphate hydrogen symporter, among others. In the intermembrane space, roughly 100 proteins consist of cytochrome C, adenylate kinase, creatine kinase, and others. Finally, the matrix consists of 500 proteins such as the various TCA cycle enzymes as well as transcription and replication factors. As aforementioned, since most of these proteins are derived from nuclear DNA, they are imported into the mitochondria via protein complexes such as the TOM, TIM23, TIM22, and SAM complexes. These complexes mediate where proteins are shuttled to, as well as their stitching, if necessary, into the membrane. This is all made possible due to the matrix's overall greater electronegativity, due to electron transport complexes pumping hydrogens out of the matrix, making it relatively more negative. The inner membrane allows this to happen through the use of complex 1, complex 3, and complex 4 of the electron transport chain. The inner membrane also contains ATP ADP antiporters to move end products of the ETC and substrate for the ETC out and in, respectively, as well as a pyruvate antiporter to move pyruvate into the matrix in exchange for hydroxide molecules. It also contains symporters, such as the inorganic phosphate translocase, which allows phosphate and hydrogen into the matrix. In the intermembrane space, there are a series of enzymes that aid in the exchange of high-energy phosphates to aid in the efficiency of various systems. Adenylate kinase helps maintain high concentrations of ATP during strenuous exercise in using two ADP molecules to form AMP and ATP by transferring a phosphate group from one ADP to the fellow. Creatine kinase, similar to adenylate kinase in goal, transfers a phosphate from the creatine phosphate molecule to ADP to resynthesize ATP. If ATP levels are high relative to ADP, 
Then the creatine kinase reaction moves in the reverse to resynthesize creatine phosphate. Finally, nucleoside diphosphate kinase catalyzes GTP and ADP to form ATP and GDP, ATP for energy and GDP for the tricarboxylic acid cycle, or the TCA cycle. The matrix, on the other hand, contain a host of enzymes involved in pyruvate oxidation, fatty acid oxidation, and the recently mentioned tricarboxylic acid cycle. Finally, a synopsis on mitochondrial fusion and fission. When mitochondria become too large, they split much like bacteria, which is interesting considering the dominant theory of why humans and other mammals have an aerobic metabolism is based around the ancient integration of a mitochondrial-like bacteria in eukaryotes. This process of splitting into smaller mitochondria is called fission and is possible through a pinching of the mitochondrion down the middle, with replicated DNA moving to either the mother mitochondrion or the daughter mitochondrion. Fusion, on the other hand, is the opposite reaction in which two mitochondrions, as the name implies, fuse via tethering proteins MFN1, which attach both organelles together, allowing the outer membranes to fuse together and for the inner membranes to follow. If neither of these processes occur, mitochondria may also be tagged for mitophagy, in which lysosomes degrade mitochondria via hydrolases. This usually occurs to control the number of mitochondria in the cell. And thus concludes my presentation on mitochondrial compartments. Consider this further proof I would like an opportunity to receive my PhD.